We are here with Mark Lauder, Director of Strategic Communications for the Trump campaign. Thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Now, um, first of all, what do you want to say about watching the lead up to the caucus, uh, Iowa's failed caucus, the Nevada Democrats having to come up with a new plan? What do you want to say? Well, I think it just shows, I mean, for folks who really think that they are prepared to take over the government, take over your private health insurance, and they can't even manage their, their caucus in Iowa, it's not a very good sign for them. Uh, they, got the, they got the votes out in New Hampshire, and, uh, and we'll see how the, uh, the Nevada process plays out. Uh, but for, for our standpoint, it doesn't really matter. Obviously, President Trump is uh, not on the ballot here in Nevada, but it's, uh, he's clearly going to be the winner. President Trump did not have a win here in 2016. What do you think would be different this time? Well, I think a couple of things. Number one, we, he's got a record to run on. And when you take a look at all the cranes that are dotting the landscape here in, in Las Vegas and you look at the economy, this is something President Trump can point to. 125,000 jobs have been created in Nevada since he was elected, 17,000 manufacturing jobs. So those are very real gains. Uh, but then you also contrast that with, with the policies that are being put forward by the Democrat leaders of taking away people's union health benefits, taking away people's Medicare Advantage plans for senior citizens. I mean, those are just not plans with $3 trillion plus in tax increases, those are just not uh, winning messages for many Americans. We keep hearing you cannot win if you do not have the Latinx vote. Um, considering President Trump's stance on immigration and how unpopular it is with some in the Latinx community, what do you want to say? Well, I think two things. Number one, if you take a look at the numbers, President Trump is actually polling very well among Latino and Hispanic voters. And I think many of them realize that the president's President's policies on immigration are not anti-immigrant. They are anti-illegal immigrant. And illegal immigration lowers wages for those at the bottom of the income ladder. It causes people to, to have to compete for jobs when they should just be competing among fellow, fellow citizens and people who are in our country legally. The president knows that for the first time in American history, we have more jobs available than we do unemployed people. We have to have immigrants in our country. We are a country of immigrants. We just want them to do it legally, and we want, and we want the folks who are coming here to have the skills and the education and training to be able to compete and succeed and make America even better. I was at a Latinx event earlier today, and what we were hearing uh, from one woman on the panel, she said she's concerned for her family. What do you want to say about that as, a po as far as ICE? Well, what, what ICE is focused on are people who are in our country illegally and are, create, are committing criminal activities. They are not out there rounding up just random folks. They are looking at folks who are breaking the law, who are putting people's lives, property in danger. And so that's where the focus has been on, on ICE, is making sure that the criminal elements of those who are in our country illegally are, are taken care of. That way, our, our communities, our, safe, our, our neighborhoods are safer. Changing gears here, uh, marijuana is legal in the state of Nevada. Obviously, it is still illegal federally. Could we hear any updates on a stance from President Trump on marijuana? I think the president's been pretty clear on his views on marijuana at, at, the, at the federal level. I know many states have taken a, a different path, but I think what the president is looking at is looking at this from a, from a standpoint of a parent, of a parent of, of, a, of a young person, to make sure that we keep our kids away from drugs. They need to be kept illegal. Uh, that is the federal policy. And uh, if he changes that, obviously, that would be something that I, would, I wouldn't want to get out in front of him on that. Um, how concerned are you about the role the impeachment could play in the election? Well, this is, I mean, if anything, it has made President Trump even stronger. His approval ratings right now are at the highest level since he took office. His, uh, we've had fundraising that has been 20 to 30 percent ahead of where we were prior to the impeachment. And we've had millions of people reach out to our campaign to volunteer and to donate. The Democrats made a very bad bet. Nancy Pelosi said a year ago that we shouldn't impeach a president unless it's uh, bipartisan and overwhelming. Neither of those things happened, and I think they're going to have to reap the benefit, uh, reap what they sowed because they went down this one-party impeachment process. Uh, could the election this time around be different since 
President Trump just will be the nominee. Is there a, going to be a lack of excitement? <laughs> no, there's definitely not a lack of excitement when it comes to President Trump. I and mean, we see people lined up days in advance prior to his rallies to come out and see him. I've never seen a phenomenon like this as it is uh, as it happens with President Trump. The one thing that's going to be different, though, is that we're not going to be competing on just the 2016 playing field. We're not looking at just winning the states that President Trump won in 2016. We plan to win them, and then we're expanding the map. That's why you see such a strong presence here in Nevada. It's why we're also sending people to New Mexico, to New Hampshire, Minnesota, Virginia, and other places. Uh, the president is in Colorado as well this week. Those are all states that we think because of the economy and the strength of the economy under President Trump and the radical policies of the Democrats who are now being led by a self-proclaimed socialist, every state in the union is probably in play right now for President Trump, except California. We noticed a lot of spending for the campaign on social media. Can you talk, is there a shift this time around? Well, we made, we made uh, expert use of social media during the 2016 campaign, and that's actually just getting stronger and stronger as we approach 2020. What the president has been able to do is make sure that he's taking the message and delivering it directly to the people, as opposed to going through the traditional, say, paid media, television, radio ads, and we have those as well. But one of the things that we saw was really effective was being able to identify issues that matter to individual people, and then being able to, to tailor an ad that addresses the concerns that they have on the issues that they feel most passionate about. And that's something that we're going to continue to do very strongly in 2020. And it's an area where, frankly, the Democrats failed in 2016 and they have not really been able to catch up in 2020. What do you want to say about Michael Bloomberg? Well, I think it's going to be very interesting to see if uh, if he's going to be able to make a difference. I mean, let, let's be honest here. The Democrat National Committee changed the rules for their debate to allow Michael Bloomberg on the stage of the Las Vegas debate, and he's not even on the ballot in here in Nevada. So if you're a Bernie Sanders supporter who is leading in all the polls, leading in the delegates, even leading in a lot of the states that come next, they have to be asking themselves, is this Groundhog Day? Is this 2016 all over again, where the Democrat National Party and the party leaders are going to try to take the nomination away from Bernie Sanders? Looking at the pool now, who do you consider the most dangerous? Uh, we don't as look far at, as a win or a lose. Yeah, we don't actually look at them any differently. Uh, they, they, because each one of them stood up, raised their hands, thinking that taxpayers should be paying for free health care for illegal immigrants. They have all endorsed some, some version of the radical Green New Deal and the trillions of dollars of tax increases that would go with it. They've all raised their hand and said that a baby, a day before it's due to be born, should, uh, should be able to be aborted. Those are some very radical policies that are, I think, out of touch with what the majority of America wants. And so whichever one of their candidates comes out of that mess of a primary, they're going to have to own all of those issues. They're going to have to explain it, and they're going to have to compete against Donald Trump again with it. What do you want to say about the commutations of the sentences announced this week, especially someone like uh, former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich? He doesn't have to serve his entire sentence. What, what message does that send? He's someone who tried to sell a Senate seat. Well, I think what people are focusing on are, are the former governor of Illinois and not looking at some of the other sentences where the president commuted sentences uh, of people who were serving very long, excessive sentences for minor drug offenses, minor nonviolent drug offenses, this president championed criminal justice reform. He wants to make sure that excessive sentencing is something that is not done any longer. And I think in the case of Rod Blagojevich, and many court observers were shocked by the length of the sentence he got for what he was actually accused of doing, but then also look at the others. The, the young woman who got a, a more than a dozen years in prison because someone in her apartment was Dealing drugs, or someone that was a very minor player in a in a very small drug uh, drug trade, uh, that got a, again a very long sentence, had children and families at home. The president acted to make sure that those ex excessive sentences were were taken care of. The folks had actually paid their due. They were they were strong in terms of 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 rehabilitating themselves. And now it's time to see if they can go out and make something better of their lives. But to the average Joe. For someone like Rod Blagojevich, I mean, 
Well, Barack Obama uh, pardoned or used a, the executive clemency powers of the president to to free a terrorist to uh, to actually pardon and or commute the sentence of a traitor. Bill Clinton was pardoning his brother and a lot of his key funders. I mean, that that's, this is something that goes with every presidency. They all deal with this issue. Uh, but what I would say is that we look at the larger group that the president actually dealt with and some of the excessive sentences that they had for nonviolent drug crimes which you hear many Democrats out there saying that we need to deal with this thing, and then they're attacking the president for doing just that. So as the director of strategic communications, I have to ask you, do you ever see President Trump's tweets and say, why? Or, <laughs> or, or, or do you ever say, let's take away his phone? Or I mean, what's your yeah. role? And, and honestly, mm -hmm. what is that like for you to watch his tweets? I, it, you know, I'll tell you something. The, the president, every, every president in history has tried to be able to communicate directly with the American people, whether it was FDR with his fireside chats or JFK and the televised news conferences. Obviously, Ronald Reagan made uh, you know, quite a bit of television uh, as president. This is the first president who actually can do that. His social media platform reaches more people than watch the Super Bowl every year every time he activates it every single day and the one thing that people know and I think that a lot of people appreciate about, appreciate about this president is that you know exactly what's on his mind it's not poll tested it's not always the perfect political soundbite he lets you in on what he's thinking and and helps give people kind of a, that view of him not just as a president on television but what's actually he's thinking about and so it's a power that he he uses masterfully and uh, and I and it's not something I can see changing okay thank you so much for joining thank us thank you very much